So recently, the uh, Persona remaster came out, Persona 3 Reload. I was actually waiting for it for a while, and um, I was really expecting that remake. I'm not gonna lie, I'm a Shin Megami Tensei fan, and I'm a Persona fan. But I wasn't a big fan of 3 originally. 3 was too... Um, if 1 and 2 were closer to Shin Megami and add pre-established gameplay to fall back on, 3 went deeper into that social aspect and kind of fumbled the bag in the beginning. And I'm not gonna lie, uh, it's not because something isn't woke that it's necessarily good. Persona 3 was really edgy and not in a tongue-in-cheek way, it really took itself a, a, a bit too seriously and I like the, the characters less in that one compared to 4 or 5. But I was still hoping for a remake, um, every subsequent version of that game got better with the addition of content but also uh, gameplay features like being able to actually fucking control your characters. So after a long week at work, Persona 3 Reload finally gets released, and I get a chance to play it. First... 30 seconds. 2 minutes and 30 seconds if you count the intro. Um, there's uh, the protagonist. He uh, it, it was called Minato, but now uh, there's a new canon name, Yuki. Whatever, I'm gonna call him Minato because uh, I, I'm old like that. So Minato um, is walking around and you see uh, uh, schoolgirls with their bags. And of course, they have a uh, pride flag on their bag as a pin. And of course, immediately, you know your boy. I have to go back to the original intro and see if it was there. And of course, it was not. And then I learn that... Um, Later in the game, they, they cut out a part where they make fun of a trans character and instead replace it with a part where they make fun of a conspiracy theorist. It's not okay to make fun of people, but it's okay to make fun of the people that I do not like. So that's basically it. So now we've reached a point where that kind of change was happening in um, Western video games, where they would but really small things. For example, Spider-Man 1, a pretty decent game, a uh, derivative of open world game, but it wasn't much. A, a pride flag here or there, or a, a, a gay character here and there. And then when they put that foot through the door, then they go to the second step. And when they've reached the second step, it's too late. It doesn't matter if you complain or call them out, once they're in the house, they're in the house. What are you going to do about it? Once they've had, once they've stolen your money and spent it, no amount of calling them out will help because that money has already been spent. And so, with uh, the Western games, that's how it started. Slowly, but surely. And then we started with minor things, superficial things. Think about the toilet in Dead Space. Or the posters where they remove all the white people. The main game is not affected. But superficial things are changed throughout. Until, like Spider-Man 2, you make a sequel that is overtly on their side. And really, really pushes an agenda. And you got games like uh, Alan Wake 2. Alan Wake 1 was just a game. And then you play Alan Wake 2. And it's so so far off the deep end, you don't even play the protagonist in his own game, you play a woman that was white originally, but then was turned to a black woman. And you can tell that she was supposed to be white originally, because she was present not only in one of the other games, but she's supposed to be the daughter of uh, um, Odin, which doesn't make sense if she's black. They, they changed her superficially, but they didn't change the script. And she's not mixed, she's 100% black. So it looks incredibly goofy. So now I'm thinking, I want to play the game, but I have so many things in my backlog. Less than I used to. Now my backlog mostly consists of PC, Xbox, and Switch games. 
and not the PS2 and Super Nintendo lineup that I have, but I'm still thinking, why would I waste my time on a game like this when I can just play something else? And it's really, it's it's really discouraging when you get things like that. They really want to make sure that the DNA of the game is contaminated and that you can't enjoy anything about it whatsoever. Speaking of not enjoying things, there's a Silent Hill game that was recently released uh, called Silent Hill The Short Message and it has absolutely nothing to do with Silent Hill. It's another game that's female-centric about how young women suffer so much. Silent Hill 3 had a message about the suffering of young women, but you cared about it because it was subtle and it wasn't beating you over the head with it. While this game, it does, and of course it has to focus on social media and be an unsubtle as fuck. And again, the female protagonist in that game they're all fucking ugly. And if you look at the actresses that served as a base, well, they're decent looking young women. But nowadays, you can't have decent looking young women. You have to make them ugly. And even it, it doesn't matter how beautiful they are, they're going to find a way to make them ugly. And if they can't, they're going to find a way to make sure that you can't enjoy it. Like, for example, um, with uh, Stellar Blade, which has a pretty magnificent female protagonist who is played by a woman who is a legal adult, but they want to make you sound like you're some kind of sex offender just because you're enjoying a woman. If she's young and she's pretty, you must be some kind of sex offender. Never mind the fact that she's legal in pretty much every country. We have to find a way to spin it to make you look bad because we know that we know that the normies will not look deeply into it. If people accuse you of something, people just assume that it's true. And just because we've went through me too and now people are suspicious of false accusation doesn't mean that they're suspicious or have learned of every trap that is out there. Accusations of sexual offenses of that type, people have to learn that most of them are fake. Now they're trying to push this narrative that, oh, a 25 year old woman is underage. It's such nonsense. So now you play games, but even your Japanese games are not safe and with the and with Hideki Kamiya leaving and with the, the departure of the Yakuza creator Toshiro Nagoshi things are really not looking good for the Japanese game industry it's start they've ba they're basically doing the same process that they did with the Western game industry and Western media in general, but restarting it on another continent. So now we're going to start slowly but surely having subtitles that are nonsense, like with uh, Yakuza Infinite Wealth. And then it doesn't matter if you learn Japanese because eventually the, the entire script will be written to be woke. The characters will be modeled to be woke. They've started to change not just um, subtitles and dialogue, but even swap character voices. You simply cannot escape. And the slow march of progressivism is coming forward. There's multiple things that make it so that fighting is difficult and that we can't really get rid of those things. But if I had to point one, you know, there's multiple, like for example, um, the fact that companies have an incentive, the ESG money, to push those things, but if I have to find one big culprit, it's the public itself. A lot of people playing video games right now have not known the past eras of video game and don't know what a good game is, and they think that it's not so bad, and they have no sense of perspective to compare and realize that, no, those games are pretty bad. Th those games are pretty awful and have absolutely less content that than we used to. And so, we, we don't have, with video games, 
a campaign like for example that we had with like Bud Light where people boycotted the fuck out of the product and sales went down we need to do that we need to stop buying these games we need to buy more things like uh, the new Mario or iFi Rush so some kind of indie game that's actually just a game and make sure that we've pushed people out that don't deserve to be here Paul world is actually apparently doing pretty well but the thing is that if we manage to build another industry I think one of the main things we have to think about is that we need to gatekeep because no matter how much success we have if we have infiltrators that are backed by the mainstream media or constantly gaslighting us it doesn't matter how many you are because sometimes the few are stronger because they know where to hit and they know what to do that's something that i've noticed in general with different fandoms whether it's skateboarding bmx video games uh stamp collecting people need to stop trying to be too open you just need to let people come in slowly but surely if your thing is not popular maybe it was never meant to be popular because when you start opening the doors like that that's when we get all the infiltrators and the thing falls apart completely i'm gonna go play some persona and just hope that it doesn't get worse from there that silent hill 2 remake is going to be dog shit Watch them change the entire history of Silent Hill.